seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, yo? Welcome back to another video. It's Anisha. I'm joined with Jacob and E. And today we're going to be talking about the NBA Draft Lottery, which is tomorrow. And the other name for this, the Victor Vembanyama sweepstakes. And as we all know, he is the lock to go number one overall. And he's been touted to be the best prospect since LeBron James. And many say that he could do it all. He could be the GOATs when it's all said and done. And he can do it all from scoring, playmaking, defense. He's just the total package. And the Rockets, as Rockets fans know, we were a little bit accustomed to the lottery, right? We've had the second pick overall with Jalen Green and then the third pick overall with Jabari Smith Jr. And as a result of being the second worst team in the NBA, right behind the Pistons, they still have a 14% chance of getting the number one pick. And the worst pick that they can get in this lottery is the sixth pick. So they have the 14% chance to get pick number one. 13.42% chance to get pick number two, 12.74% chance to get pick number three, 11.97% chance to get pick number four, a 27.84% chance to get pick number five, and a 20.04% chance to get pick number six. So they basically have a 50% chance in all to kind of get top four pick. And as I said before, 40% chance to get pick number one. And the second overall pick historically has done pretty well in the lottery getting the first pick three times in recent memory, second pick one time, third pick one time, fourth pick four times, and fifth pick one time. And they never got in the, the sixth pick in the last uh, 10 or so years. I don't know if, if that's a little ominous, <laughs> considering like the Rockets' luck. I mean, we haven't gotten the first pick in the last three or so drafts, so maybe third time's the charm. But before I start, E and Jacob, we already know that Victor is going first overall but who are your top six prospects in this draft class yeah um for me it's it's like i feel like it's pretty standard from one to four it's one that you at one although i do have school at almost like 1.5 and i feel like that's going to trigger a lot of people but i really really love scoot but i have him at two and then you know, at three to, to six, it just, like, everyone could be different. A lot of people have Brandon Miller at three. I have Eamon Thompson personally at three. But then, you know, Brandon Miller at four. And then at five, it goes to Asor Thompson. And at six, it's uh, Cameron Whitmore from Villanova. I have the exact same top six. So <laughs> I, was, I was looking through mine and I was, and I see what you were going to say. I had the exact same list, so I don't have to read mine off. Hey, my bad. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> good. That's that's awesome. I mean, that's. I mean, I, I've heard people say that this draft class is kind of top heavy. Obviously, having Victor, but then as you kind of get on to the later picks, it kind of deviates from there. But just talking more about Victor, since he is the crown jewel of this draft class, if you had to make a case, I guess as to why the Rockets would be the best landing spot for him, what would you say? I would just bring up the fact that there's a big possibility that James Harden comes back to Houston this year. And he's such a good playmaker, it would be a huge benefit to win Bayama rookie year for him to be able to come in and get open shots from Harden's playmaking. And just also defensively, I think... With Yudoka, I think he'd be a good fit with him, and he'd get to play alongside Jabari and Tari. I mean, I think they'd be a good fit for him, and I think he fit the timeline really well with the young core the Rackets have. Yeah, and I feel like one thing people are forgetting to mention about Wemby is that you can kind of run Sangoon with him and, you know, run him at the four, and then you'd kind of have Wemby and Tari or Jabari who was ever running the three kind of hide Sangoon's weaknesses on defense. I feel like that's something that a lot of people are overlooking is that Wemby's defensive impact is is very, very clear. It's very, very good. And, you know, him being seven foot five, seven foot four really helps him. So yeah, he's definitely a special, special talent. So um I yeah, I was just about to talk about James Harden. So like if the Rockets I think the Rockets, it seems like a foregone conclusion to some that the Rockets are going to sign James Harden for 
whatever contract and and say we don't get Victor Mamanyama, does that change who they might draft at second overall? I know you said you have Scoot at second overall. Obviously, they both play like a similar position at release with James Harden, he who is now more of a point guard at this point in his career. Does that kind of change who they draft at second overall, or do they take Scoot as more of like a like a project type of guy? Since he does, from what I've been seeing, is that he doesn't improve his shot selection and his shot making, but he is very creative and crafty around the rim and has a lot of potential to improve in that aspect. Does James Harden chase the calculus of anything in terms of who they draft? I don't think that should impact it at all. I I think Scoot is just a much better prospect. I I would just if you get the second overall pick, I would pick Scoot, and I probably wouldn't go out and pay hard. I think you just start Scoot from day one, and I think he'd be. I think you have to give him reps on the ball to really have him progress the way you want. So I would just run him out there, and I'd go out and spend your money somewhere else, maybe Cam Johnson or Austin Reeves or whoever else out there, Brooke Lopez, if he wanted to come here. There's there's a lot of options outside of hard that I would just I would scrap the hard idea if you got scoop. Yeah, I'm I'm also in agreement here. It's if if we're at number two, I feel like you can't let a thirty three year old uh, aging star kind of influence your decision. That's gonna be a big decision to the future, especially considering Scoot is still young and you know, him and Jalen can grow together as a backcourt, especially in the league. So yeah, I'm definitely on team go get Scoot and you know forget about Harden at two. Yeah, those those are fair. That makes a lot of sense. I just wonder how I guess KPJ would feel because his nickname is Scoot and he wants to be the point guard and stuff like that. But there's a lot of young players on this team and how they kind of all mesh with all this youth. There's a lot of question marks going in for Emi Udoka for us and a lot of people are assuming that since the Rockets got such a high caliber coach that they might like make some trades to get some more win now players. So I want to ask you guys if the Rockets do have the worst case scenario and they get pick six or maybe even pick five, both of those combined, they have a 50% chance or 48% chance of getting either pick five or pick six. Do you think that the Rockets consider trading on one of those picks to get a win now player? I've heard seeing some names of Jalen Brown. Are there any other guys you would consider trading those picks for or would you not even consider that at, at all? For me personally, I, I would kind of consider trading down. I wouldn't consider trading for like a superstar, especially pick five or pick six. But I can see Cam with more like going in the eight, seven, eight range. So if you get pick five, you know, go down to eight, pick up an extra first or pick up a few assets and just kind of take Cam with more because he'd be a good fit with us too. Yeah, I'm kind of on your side with this one. I eh? So Jalen Brown's been thrown around a lot. But first of all, with how well Boston's playing and there's a good job they win the championship, I don't think he's going to get moved. And also, I I really wouldn't want to invest a ton of asset and go super max Jalen Brown. I just, I don't trust him to be like a number one on a championship team, so I wouldn't invest that many assets with him. I would just, I would just stay there and pick whether one of the Thompson twins or Whitmore, like you said, I, I would, I would just stick and pick. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. I mean, it's very smart. I know Stone has a lot of a good, like, kind of late round steals, I guess. But, or I guess not super late round, but like Shingoon was like a mid round pick. And obviously, he's amazing. KJ Martin was like kind of like the almost, I think, the last pick in the second round. I could be wrong. I think he was pick 55, I want to say. Five or 52, I think. I don't know. That was a great steal. And then, so I, I feel like Stone is pretty good in valuing like kind of like the talent and like kind of later in the first round or circ second round. So if that is in the cards for the Rockets, that could be a, definitely a move. And I guess like let's talk about like a dark horse p- prospect that you guys haven't mentioned in your top six prospects. Is there anyone who could be of intrigue who could be like a better kind of fit? I guess I know best player available is probably the move, but who would be like a dark horse prospect for you guys? One of the guys that I'll throw out there. But I think I know what I, I think I know what you'll talk about. I'll throw out uh, Anthony Black from Arkansas. I think he'd be a pretty good fit with the Rockets right now. I think he I think he's a pretty good playmaker from what I've seen. I haven't looked into it too much, but I know a lot of people are really high on him. And I know he tested 
pretty well at the combine, which I believe started today. And I watched some Arkansas games. Pretty impressive from what I saw. I, I, he's a bigger guard, and he, he, there's a lot of potential there. So if maybe they land at six and they trade back, like you mentioned, he could be a target for uh, at maybe pick eight or pick nine for that. Yeah, he, you can you can also take uh, Jarris Walker at six. He'd be a very, very good fit in Houston. You know, kind of like what I talked about with Wemby, how you can hide Sengun's weaknesses on defense. Jarris Walker kind of also gives you that option. Obviously not as good as Wemby would be, but, you know, he can give you that option to improve your defense much, much more. And, you know, speaking also of defense, I'm going to take this opportunity to mention one of my favorite prospects since uh, Anish, you mentioned the uh, Stone finding some talent in, in the later picks. Derek Lively at pick 20 with the Clippers, that would be someone I wouldn't be surprised if Stone takes. You know, off the bench, big, that can defend very, very well. He can play with, you know, KPJ. He can play with Jalen. He can play with Ty Ty Washington, too. And he, he kind of reminds me of Mobley a bit. So for anyone that was on the Mobley train and you're kind of pissed we didn't take him, maybe this is your chance at, at redemption, you know? <laughs> Just to add on to what Jacob said about Anthony Black about the combine, I think he tested at like 39-inch vertical. And so I think that's pretty insane in terms of like, and he's a 6'7 guard. So that would be a really interesting combination, I think. Like, you could argue that point guard is the biggest position of need for the Rockets, so he could be a great fit. And obviously, Walker, Lively, obviously both great, great choices. So I think we should end the video with a Tankathon simulation, as in tradition. And I don't know how many uh, Tankathon simulations you guys have personally done, but yeah, let's just go ahead and get on with it. And so we're just going to do a one take, you know, take get our live reactions as if this is the actual results of the lot nba lottery so three two one okay oh god oh. <laughs> so houston gets pick five um so charlotte they win the Wembenyama sweepstakes i think that's pretty interesting with lonzo ball there and charlotte and then dallas gets picked number two they have a very small percent chance to get something that high they had a three percent chance to get pick number one so that would be pretty interesting what do you guys think about what just happened um, i mean jumping up is definitely interesting <laughs> yeah i was about to say that pick two dallas and pick three detroit that's two guys that might not take scoot henderson so that yeah could be an opportunity for us to jump up from five to two maybe five to three even cam whitmore at number three overall <laughs> Jared Walker, you know, there's the Thompson twins. Yeah, I can see where the Thompson twins going to maybe Detroit or a team like that because they are bigger guard forwards. Because if you're Dallas, I don't really know why you would want Scoot. It doesn't seem like a great fit with Luca. Dallas could also like trade that pick for a star. Like, yeah, like big I could, I could see we didn't mention it with the Rockets part, but. OG Ananobi would be a guy that I could see getting dealt at some point if, like, a team like that were to move back. Maybe not for the second overall pick, but... Maybe for the fifth. Yeah, I, I don't know. They might trade that fifth for OG, I guess. Yeah, would be a good fit with Odoka, too. He's a very good defender. My man, so Garuba. Don't sleep on Garuba. <laughs> yeah, man, I love Garuba. You're preaching to the, to the choir here. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, pick five, I guess, how, on a disappointment level, I guess, one to one to ten, how disappointed would you guys be if you got pick five? Fifteen out of ten disappointment. <laughs> I'd be pretty disappointed, but I think I'd be more around like a six. I think I'd be able to talk myself into Whitmore or one of the Thompson twins. So yeah. I, I think I'd I think I'd be all right with it. OK, OK. Just for just for fun, I guess. And. Just to see how many tries it would take to get pick number one. Let's just go test that theory out. Um, so we can't even work. <laughs> All right. So, okay, a 10 number three, get oh, pick God. five again. This is not a good sign for us, hopefully. Oh, God. <laughs> Chicago gets on, number one in this. Wow, that's insane. Um, so that's a 10 three, a 10 four. Okay. Yeah. Hey. yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, let's just pretend that this was our first try, obviously. <laughs> we can't yeah, make- first try. try. <laughs> That's the video. Oh, uh, yeah, in the video right there. But, yeah, obviously, best case scenario, we get Victor. Worst case scenario, pick six. But, I mean – we need this guys like, we, like it's <laughs> so good if we got victor but i mean 14 percent chance anything can happen in the lottery maybe the nba gods will be kind to us they have been pretty nice to us we got pick two pick three pick one maybe <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh yeah any final thoughts before we wrap up the video guys i'll just throw out there that i think if the rockets get top four you should be happy about it fair, fair. yeah I, i'd agree with that Top four is is a pretty good scenario. Obviously, not as good as one or two, but three and four isn't that bad, honestly. Absolutely. True, very true. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And may the odds be ever in our favor tomorrow for the NBA draft lottery. And we'll definitely have some videos coming out with based on the results, um, based on who would be like some prospects we could target in the in the picks that we get. So Stay tuned for that, but that's it for the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.